Right, so as people head to the polls today to vote for local councillors, metro mayors, police and crime commissioners perhaps, and all the rest of it, Keir Starmer chose the day before, on International Workers' Day no less, just to add insult to injury, to weaken Labour's party policy on workers' rights. He appears to have such disdain for ordinary working people, such contempt for them, that he is prepared to choose that day of all days to send the message out that he's for the bosses, not for you. He still thinks you're going to vote for him anyway, just to get the Tories out. Labour are no longer the people of the working class, no longer the party of the working class, made up of overwhelmingly faceless suits who've never had a real job in their lives, and nothing quite dots the I's and crosses the T's on that than having a knight of the realm leading that party now. Sir Keir Starmer has lied to you again, so I hope you thought long and hard before putting a cross next to a Labour candidate's name in today's local elections. Right, so, workers' rights. Starmer's watered down Labour policy on this score yet again. It's not even the first time, you see, having binned off plans some eight months ago now to actually strengthen workers' rights, telling us Labour would stand by the rights of workers as they are now under the Tories, which was hardly ambitious, was it, and certainly didn't live up to the name of their party. Labour. You called it for a reason. The trouble is those Labour benches, those Labour seats are filled with too many who've never done a proper day's work in their lives and are therefore completely detached and out of touch with the lives of ordinary working class people up and down the country and what we all need to do day to day just to get by. But to choose the 1st of May, International Workers' Day, it's literally called Labour Day in some countries, to announce a weakening of workers' rights under a future Labour government. Again, I ask you, where the heck is the difference here? between the Tories we have now and this red Tory with no more interest in making your life better than the cretins in power now. Why have they done it? Business and bosses apparently, i.e. donors, at least that's what I hear whenever I hear business and bosses or who Labour is talking to. That's as far as Labour goes these days, have apparently been squealing like stuck pigs that Labour's plan for a new deal for working people, as it has been trumpeted since 2021 now, will hurt business too much. A proper Labour Party would turn around and tell them, well you've had it good for long enough sunshine, ordinary working class people need a better deal from their employers now, so suck it up buttercups. But instead Starmer has seemingly gone, it's alright lads, leave it with me. I'll see what I can do for you instead. If you're on their side, you're a Tory. We have a party of big business bosses already, we don't need two of them let alone be trapped by an unfair electoral system as well, condemning us to only ever be ruled by one or the other. Labour had promised higher sick pay. They had promised an end to the disgusting practice of fire and rehire. Even though under Starmer, Labour had engaged in that practice themselves after blowing much of the money Corbyn had left in the party coffers in multiple rounds of redundancies, only to try and hire some of the people back again on worse terms and conditions. There was also a place to reverse anti-strike laws, even though Starmer refuses to attend pickets since he became Labour leader, and banned front benches from doing so as well, on pain of being sacked, as Sam Tarry will tell you, showing no solidarity with workers at all. Always with Starmer, it doesn't matter what he says. His word is so worthless you couldn't afford to buy a copy of yesterday's newspaper with it. It is always what he does that matters. His actions speak louder, and importantly, more honestly than anything he ever says. Fire and rehire won't show solidarity with workers and now to take more of your rights away to appease your bosses and not just you. Just last February gone he told business chiefs that it wouldn't please everyone in the room what Labour had planned on workers' rights. Yet now business leaders are saying that having spoken to members of the party at several business meetings with them since they were instead feeling pretty relaxed about it instead. Seems safe to assume they won't amount to too much at all then, these workers' rights reforms that won't happen under Labour then, will they? Well, apparently, shadow ministers have been working to placate business leaders by bringing them on board and holding consultations with them on what they would like to see. And these are, to some extent, apparently ongoing, hence no new version of the New Deal to publish and report on just yet. But when Labour are choosing to sit with the bosses to work out workers' rights, and not the workers themselves, you don't actually need to know what's coming to know it's going to be worse for you. As Labour seeks to look better to the eyes of business leaders, solely, of course, just to neuter any Tory attack lines and blow to the workers whose votes they expect to get anyway. 
The problem is, the more like Tories you act, the more you invite accusations of being Tories yourselves. Who you know, walks like a Tory and talks like a Tory and all of that. And actually, given there's so little detail to put flesh on the bones of this now, it makes it look even worse than these plans to work and weaken workers' rights came out on International Workers' Day, because you don't even have the common decency to announce in what ways it's going to be a worse deal, just that it will be. This was supposed to be one of those mission-led approaches to policy, wasn't it? Is it now his mission to weaken the mission he had before, and then and that is the mission-led approach he's now taking? Nevertheless, although details are scant, the Financial Times has mentioned a couple of points. Zero hours contracts, which Labour was set to ban, now won't be. Instead, there will be a right to an houred contract reflecting a regular work pattern over the first 12 weeks of employment. Will this be an enforceable right or not, though? That's not clear. Steinmer also touted a right to be able to switch off and not have your boss contact you in your free time. There was quite a big story going around in the media not all that long ago about that. This was to be enshrined into law, after all. Now, that won't happen either. It'll instead be listed in the code of practice overseen by the ACAS arbitration services, and smaller companies will be exempt from it entirely. The single status for employment is out the window now as well, now reduced to a consultation, so that'll be a chat with the bosses over a coffee and cake, presumably, and where fair pay agreements were due to be implemented in all work sectors, that's now only going to happen in social care. They're also going to apparently review parental leave. But again, if it is only the employers you're interested in consulting with, how can these things ever be done in working people's interests? Of course, Labour figures, nameless of course, are apparently all saying this is not a U-turn. But when it amounts to leaving things as the Tories have them now, or weakening them even further... Because instead of talking to the people your party is meant to represent, that your party is named after, you're talking to their employers. Well, the fun and games is just beginning. Labour haven't yet taken these ideas to the trade unions, but they're assent yet, and they aren't very likely to, I wouldn't imagine. Unite boss Sharon Graham, for example, herself having been subpoenaed to give evidence in an employment tribunal case in Ireland, where she and her union are currently being accused of being bad bosses themselves, it's a little bit rich of her to wade into this story, nevertheless tweeted out by saying, Choosing May Day to give notice of watering down your promise to overhaul one of the worst sets of employment rights in Europe is beyond irony. Now, it's impossible to not agree with that statement, even if it has come from her. Another far better spokesman for the union movement is Matt Rack of the Fire Brigades Union, who spoke to the FT in this excerpt. Matt Rack, General Secretary of the Fire Brigades Union, who currently holds the TUC's rotating presidency, told the Financial Times there should be no rolling back of Labour's New Deal for working people. My message is very clear. No rolling back. If there is any more rolling back on the New Deal, they can expect a hostile reaction to it, he said. People are not willing to just give up on this or retreat simply because Labour is the only show in town. So here's hoping if it does all come out, and let's face it, that consultation with the unions could be a day of reckoning where more details may become public knowledge. More people will wake up to just how pathetic this future Labour government allegedly in waiting is. Or they should do anyway. And that more people choose a better alternative than both of these main parties that you can't seem to fit a fag paper in between anymore should become a bigger and more important issue for more and more people. Meanwhile, what details we do have about Starmer's relationship to workers' rights, or lack thereof, as has come out in previous months already, can be seen on this video recommendation here, what he's already walked back on. And given that's his attitude, who would be brave enough to assume there wouldn't be even more U-turning and more watering down to come if he thinks he can get away with more of it now? And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.